The review helmet works by taking light in this rear visor here, transposing it down through the top of the helmet through a series of reflective surfaces and then down to this M1 here. Yeah, can, can you, you see, see that? inside that? Yeah. yeah, yep. Giving the wearer a view of what's going on directly behind them. So it's in effectively like a, the rear view mirror of a car. Yes, has exactly the same effect. One of the things that a lot of people see it that they don't want to be distracted by a mirror in a helmet. Now, what we see is you don't have to use this mirror by basically looking into it. You use it peripherally the same way as when I put one finger up, I'm not looking at it, but I can see there's one, there's two, there's three fingers there, then I, and I can see them quite clearly without actually having to look at them. Now, this is how you use this technology, is by your riding forward, and you can see quite clearly in this mirror what's going on behind you without actually having to look into it. Is that affected if you're carrying a pillion? Well, the width, the pillion, believe it or not, the, the, the width that this vision gives you, you'll see past the pillion. But most is like anybody who carries a pillion, unless it's, uh, it's a missus and she wants to get a bit close to you, the pillion sits with his head or the, her head to the side to see up the road. They don't sit and you can ask them. Pillions don't sit looking at the back of your head, you know, when you're riding uh, on a bike, and especially if you're doing a long distance drive. The interior mirror section then, is that adjustable at all? Yeah, the, 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 the mirror part is adjustable, it jacks down, up and down for different riding positions and it also adjusts backwards and forwards like that so you can get that perfect fit depending on where your eye line is to the relationship to the top of your head. The optic part is made out of a bulletproof material which is then coated with a reflective coating to get a perfect vision uh, reflection down to the M1 from the back of the helmet. Just tell us a little bit about the pricing structure of these helmets. The pricing structure, well, this is the uh, this is the piece de resistance. This is the uh, the full carbon autoclaved product, and this retails for 799 sterling. You'll see it in the US here for about 999 dollars. The standard helmet, which is a tri composite fiber blend. Um, shell material product that retails in the UK for about 249 sterling or the s graphic helmet in the same model that retails for 299 sterling right and do you do a, a flip up option we do, we do a flip up helmet also and that retails for 299 sterling in the UK right so it is it's, it's very reasonably priced then at the side of other helmets on the market. For a tri, well, for a tri composite helmet with the optics uh, included, it's well within the price range of, you know, of the, of the motorcyclist. The optic parts cost us more than a very, very expensive pair of sunglasses to manufacture. You know, if you were to purchase that product alone, in in relationship to let's say an SLR camera, that optic part that fits within that helmet is very, very expensive. You know. So the helmet that you've got in your hands at the minute, how many revisions have you had to go through from your very first helmet to get to the helmet that you have there? We first launched the helmet uh, and we sold about 6,000 pieces in and around about Europe and we discovered that <coughs> the the optics that were had in the, in the original helmet were, were fixed and we discovered that a lot of riders, unfortunately, yeah, the eye lines on the heads on it were in different places and the the helmet uh, with a fixed optic actually fitted probably about 40 to 50 percent of people without any problems but there was that other 50 percent where 
they had to rotate the helmet too far forward for them to be able to see, which was, you know, unacceptable for the for the retail product. So we slowed down the production and we then built this movable optic part, which is, you know, so everybody with different head shapes, sizes and eye lines, they can all use it. The padding that's on the inside of the helmet, is that adjustable or Yeah, yeah, we, we make, <coughs> as you can see, we make these, all these interior liners, all these interior liners, we make them in different thicknesses for different head sizes, different shapes, and there's a, there's a, there's a computation or a matrix of different sizes that you can use, you know, to get that, the best fit it's, it's possible. I mean, let's be fair, our helmet won't fit every head, you know, because there's so many different human head shapes, sizes out there, but we'll try to make it fit as best as possible. And the reason why we do that is because a review helmet, because it has this optics, has to be fitted properly. You know, it's a great safety feature, it, even though, the, if, forget about the optics, but for it to be used correctly, the helmet has to be fitted properly, because what you don't want is a helmet or a review helmet wobbling around because you'll not get the best benefit from the rear vision. So it has to be fitted correctly. And if it's fitted correctly, if you do unfortunately have to have a head impact where the helmet has to be used for its primary function, you won't suffer like what some people do if they don't wear a properly fitted helmet. You're talking about the helmet fitting properly there. I'm assuming you've, you've had to undergo extensive um, certification to get this helmet legalized um, around the world. Around the world. I mean, yeah. how many countries do you currently ship to at the minute? We ship into about 35 countries currently. The helmets are homologated currently to about 12 international standards. They're all very similar, but they all have their own little nuances, you know. I understand you, you've, you've come up against your own problems in meeting the certifications in the production of this helmet. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, it... Motorcycle helmets, what a lot of people don't realise, this is a this is a safety product and it's built to and within existing standards for road safety products. Because it's this helmet has to be built within those parameters and all those parameters and all those different international standards are all a little bit of a there's a little differences and we have to fulfil them. So otherwise you cannot sell a helmet as a safety product if it doesn't carry those international standards and those standards are, and are attached to the product because it is a safety uh, item.